And here we are in front of the water tower in Ypsilanti, Michigan. I'm Retro Kimmer from RetroKimmer.com. This is approximately where Joan Shell, the second victim of John Norman Collins, the Michigan murder's co-ed killer. Uh, this is where Joan, Joan Shell was last seen, hitchhiking right here in front of McKinney Union Ballroom. And if you look over here, across the street is that porch. There was a man sitting on the porch of that house, and he saw her. He saw her get in the car with three guys. After Joan Shell was picked up by the three hitchhikers, they went around the side of McKinney Union Ballroom, and then they went back down Forest Street, back to the east, and then were never seen again. Now we're behind McKinney Union Ballroom, right in front of Briggs Hall, and this is where the car with the three young guys picked up Joan Shell, and they came around the back, and they disappeared down the street. This is all blocked off now for students to use uh, just uh, for foot traffic. But back in the 60s, this was the end of Forest Street, and you could drive up and down here. Here we are in front of 619 Emmett Street, which is where John Norman Collins had an apartment. There used to be a little garage to the left side of this house on the corner, and that's where he kept his motorcycles and his stolen car parts. And right next to that, down the hill a little bit, is 617 Emmett, which is where I used to live in 1967. I lived in that little house. And then gratefully, we moved away. That's the porch that John Norman Collins used to walk out of every single day. Here's the front of the John Norman Collins apartment house, which is now, how ironic, it's a fraternity house, just like John was. John was just a big frat boy. Well, now we're in front of 413 Washtenaw, which is where Mary Flazar's apartment was. And back in the 60s, there used to be carports here. You can see the framework inside the hedging there, where the carport frames used to be. And Mary Flazar's car was taken out of her carport and then left across the parking lot where there weren't any carports over here. This is where she lived and she was walking last seen across the street and then down Hamilton. Now we're on the corner of Emmett and Hamilton and this is where Mary Flazar was last seen and she was seen walking right down this corner and she was walking down Hamilton Street just like these people here but only in the other direction there was an older man sitting on this porch that saw Mary he knew her and he watched her walk right down Hamilton a car pulled up to her and she waved him off and he screeched around the corner and came back and did it again this time Mary went behind a vehicle and he couldn't see her anymore. Now I'm on Washington Street and that little shop right there used to be the wig store or the wig shop where John Norman Collins was seen uh, giving one of the girls a ride on the motorcycle. I think it was Karen Sue Bynaman. And then there was also a witness that was right in this business next door and uh, they saw the girl get on the motorcycle with him too. Now I'm on Huron River Drive and Don Basin, the 13 year old, was last seen walking across the street and she walked onto the railroad tracks and she went all the way down Railroad Street. Don was last seen walking by these houses right down these railroad tracks. And that's Railroad Street and right nearby there is this Ipsy school bus terminal where they're all kept and that's where she was last seen. Now we're driving up La Forge Road we're almost at the corner of La Forge and Gettys
I remember from the Forge Road was was so scary to see this person walking alone. That would have never happened in the late 60s. Nobody walked on this road. Right here on the Forge was where the old farmhouse was. And next to the farmhouse on the left side was that old dilapidated barn. And I do believe this driveway going into there is where they found the lilacs representing the different girls that have been killed. This is up the dirt road on the forge. This was really scary back in the 60s. Coming out here was way out in the boonies. Of course in 2009 there's subdivisions everywhere and traffic everywhere, joggers everywhere. But in 1960s this was really way out in the country. And this is just a pasture now that goes to an old farm. But right here was the old farmhouse right next to this power tower here and back off in here behind it was that old dilapidated barn that mysteriously burnt down and somewhere on this road was where the lilacs were left now we're driving north on Gale Road which comes right off of Gettys and up here on our left hand side is the corner of Gale and Vreeland Now we're on the top of the hill on Gale Road looking down at Vreeland. <clears throat> and this is where Don Basom was found. Right there in that clearing, right over here, is where her body was found. And she was the youngest being 13. She was in my gym class at West Junior High. I didn't know her very well, but I knew who she was. And it, they think that the body was actually pulled off the road a lot farther and nobody found her and the killer came back and drug her closer to the road but she was right out here in the open where the neighbors could see her and a doctor and his wife called in and found her this to me is the scariest of all the locations I'm not sure why but maybe because she was my age right down here was where Marilyn Skelton was found down in this gully some construction people were building these big neighborhoods back in here and they found her right here. This is right off of Heron River Drive right by Riverside where Sheriff Doug Harvey and his men had the botched surveillance activity here. See how dense that is? There's mosquitoes and picker bushes and briars and everything. It's amazing that the sheriff's guys could see anything. Now we're on Riverside and Chalmers and Karen Sue Byman's body was found just up the street here and around that bend. And I just wanted to show you guys just how dense that woods and that swamp is across the street where those sheriffs were hiding on that in the summer when the mosquitoes were killing them and it was all sweaty and horrible and terrible. How could they see anybody running down this road? from way back in those woods. This is where Karen Sue Byman's body was found half submerged in the water 20 feet off the road 20 feet down the ravine I mean. This is really frightening for the people that saw this horrific sight. <clears throat> 